When the first lockdown happened in 2020, it goes without saying that we were all living in unprecedented and unimagined times. This fact was recognised by the staff here at the museum. They began putting together items to commemorate this event. Photography, film, artwork, prose, textiles, anything that would commemorate the lockdown. However, due to subsequent lockdowns, it was hard to put a date on when this exhibition could be displayed. Then we received the fantastic news that we'd been successful in our levelling up fund bid, which allowed us to redevelop both the museum and the theatre. Unfortunately, this meant that the lockdown exhibition had to be put on hold. In the meantime, we've put together this short film to convey some of the lockdown stories with fantastic film, photography, artwork and stories. We hope you enjoy.
I do it every day. I do it for a number of reasons, but I do do it every day. It's a release, a break, a chance to stretch my legs and blow away the cobwebs. It keeps me healthy, physically and mentally. It gives me a chance to move, a chance to think. Usually in the morning, sometimes in the evening, always alone. But once a day, every day, I leave the house. It is difficult, being caged all day, staying at home so we can look after each other. So I escape, if only for the briefest time. Be it 20 minutes, half an hour, an hour or more, I leave the house and I love it. I see my neighborhood and my neighbors. Every day I see the same streets and houses and parks that I grew up with. The same landscape passing me by, my little corner of the universe. Only now, I see it with a fresh perspective, a new appreciation. Sometimes I go a little further, only a little. I feel the sun on my face and the wind at my back. Sometimes I get a little adventurous, maybe even a little wild, but mostly, I do it in the streets. I see other humans, I hear nature, and I taste freedom, if only for a moment. Sometimes I'm accompanied by music or audiobooks or podcasts. Sometimes I'm not. I'm simply alone with my thoughts, trying to make sense of the world and trying to understand my place in it. But wherever I go, whenever, however, I do appreciate it. My few moments of freedom, physical exertion, exploration. I appreciate it and all that I have. I count myself extremely fortunate to be in the position that I am. And I do not take it for granted. It has been an incredibly difficult year for so many people. And in a myriad of ways, it has taken its toll on each of us. But the end is approaching. There is hope. I know soon I will be able to meet my friends and travel and work and swim and climb and go to pubs and restaurants and see art and culture and community and sport and laughter and joy and live without fear. But for now, I do my part and I stay at home. But once a day, every day, I walk. They've become a symbol. They might look like my comfy old joggers on their last legs, but I've been wearing them every day through lockdown. So they feel like my lockdown prison uniform, a representation of my incarceration. Yes, I have to wear them like this. They've been with me for over a decade and now do not fit well. So I pull up high and tie up tight. They're also too long, a trip hazard for sure, and slightly annoying. Sure. I could have ordered some more online, but I'm in no hurry, nobody is, nothing's happening. So now I'm riding out the last remnants of their lifespan, knowing the end is surely coming soon. Just as I'm riding out the last remnants of the lockdown, knowing the end is surely coming soon. I count down until the 12th of April when I can go shopping for some new joggers. Society emerges, businesses open, trade commences, freedom granted, to an extent. It's a weird and wonderful day as I stroll through town. There's a strange atmosphere in the air, almost like a collective sigh of relief, a sense of optimism, a bizarre fusion of caution and confidence as people go about their day, taking advantage of the newly reopened services, especially barbers, every barbers. So many haircuts to be had today. Business is booming, and it's great to see. But I came here for a very specific reason. It's strange to think that the simple act of clothes shopping is such a novelty. Browsing, chatting, interacting with other humans, a semblance of normality. 
it is a very welcome change. So, as I cast off my tired old lockdown uniform, I also start to cast off the fear, frustration and uncertainty of the past year. We're not there yet, but at least I have some new joggers. Hello, we are Hayley and Louise from Halo Theatre. During lockdown, Chesterfield Council commissioned us to curate an online showcase called Chesterfield Together. We were overwhelmed with entries, local people showing their wonderful array of artistic talents. From artwork and music to sewing, magic and dancing, the final showcase was over two hours long. We want to share a small sample from Chesterfield Together. We've decided on a mixture of music and photography. We hope you enjoy it.
love how these musicians found a way to come together despite the challenges of COVID and to continue to do what they love as a group. And the photography made us reminisce on exploring nature during those first few weeks of lockdown, taking in your surroundings and having a new appreciation for the beauty that surrounds you. We hope that you've enjoyed this taster and you can view the full show by following this link. We have been Hayley and Louise of Halo Theatre. Thanks for watching.
we Jake can <laughs> live and we're best friends we're in the middle of a COVID nineteen coronavirus. We've been in quarantine uh, for about three months. We've done a lot of stuff uh planting seeds, playing all we've been doing all stuff like arts and crafts and stuff. We've been out together while social distancing. We've caught fish, watched movies together. We've quite liked it actually. It's better before it was it's actually better in quarantine. Yeah, it's funner for social distancing. We've been making forts and stuff. We've been made it, we've been making a den and we've we've been playing, been on bike rides, played in the water. We have been doing a lot of fun stuff. We've been going on loads of walks and we've we've built like this really big uh, shelter out of sticks and it's really cool. It was pretty fun. And we got a cat and his name's Jinx and he's really cute. Stay safe, stay home. Bye bye. Hi Baba, just want to wish you a very happy birthday. I know we can't celebrate how we usually would this year, which is why I've got a little surprise for you instead. So here's some birthday wishes from myself and our John Phil choir. Love you lots and miss you. Happy birthday to you. Hi, my name's Sally Hislop and I'm the Community Engagement Officer at the Don Catchment Rivers Trust. So Don Catchment Rivers Trust works to protect and restore the rivers in the Don Catchment area, including lovely rivers like this one here, the River Rother in Chesterfield. Um, normally what we do um, in our day to day is we do a lot of clean ups of the river, um, we go into schools and teach about the river and we work with local people um, to celebrate the river really and spark community pride in it. When lockdown happened, we had a bit of a stumbling block in our project because we wanted to encourage people to be outside, on the riverside, enjoying it together, and suddenly everyone was locked away in their homes, basically. So we had to sort of rethink things. And we did that in several ways. And um, we used things like Zoom to move our training online, and we did a lot of training about like wildlife in the garden, things like that, so people could still enjoy nature on their doorstep, even if they couldn't go out and visit the local river. We also did things like art competitions, photography competitions, when people were um, allowed to sort of go out a little bit more, which allowed people to sort of stay connected with what we were doing. Other things we did included um, art workshops involving nature, so things like leaf printing and things like that. One of the big projects we did was towards the end of the uh, lockdown period, um, we wanted to take part in the Chesterfield well dressing celebrations, um, and to do that we created little well dressing packs 
um, that we sent out to local families and they were able to make their own well dressing. We collected them all, put them all together and it created a big picture uh, which we displayed at Tapton Lock for people to look at. Because we weren't able to go into schools, um, we normally run River Guardian sessions for local primary schools, um, but we wanted to still be able to offer educational material. So we created an online learning pool of activities for the parents and children to access, as well as little garden school videos for them to take part in. And um, we also did like little River Guardian packs, which we sent out um, through local food banks and community practitioners to get to the children most in need that maybe didn't have computers or printers and things like that at home. At DCRT we felt it was really important to keep working in the community over the lockdown period um, rather than just stop our work and wait for things to return to what we called normal. Um, so we decided to keep working and the reason for that is that what we do work in nature is so important for people's mental health. Um, we wanted to encourage people to be active, to keep taking notice and be mindful of the natural environment. All these things are so important for our well-being. Um, so a lot of our activities focused on maintaining people's well-being during a really difficult time. Uh, a lot of our activities focused on keeping people connected with each other. So we've got a huge volunteer base and we didn't want to just sort of stop connecting with them because we couldn't run our events. So we made sure we were doing lots of activities with them all the time um, and, and we all helped each other get through it really. Uh, so I'm Matt, I work for the Doncatch and Rivers Trust and um, I was in charge of the volunteer days uh, in Chesterfield so every week we'd meet up, uh, do a litter pick on the river, um, have a cup of tea and uh, sort of like clean up the general area uh, and then when lockdown sort of came in um, obviously uh, we couldn't meet up anymore um, so we were trying to think of like ideas to keep the um, volunteers engaged we weren't actually furloughed we worked right through lockdown we knew like the tea break was really important to the volunteers because it was an opportunity to get together have a cup of tea have a biscuit have a chat and um, as well as sort of like the important environmental work that we're doing it's quite important for the uh, vol volunteers to get together um, sort of socially Obviously, like quizzes were a big thing for uh, over lockdown, lockdown quizzes uh, on Zoom. The people who needed to come to that would come to it, um, and it sort of like helped me as well having like a regular thing, like knowing that um, every Thursday at 11:30 we were going to have um, a sort of chat uh, and see all the volunteers, and it was just like that sort of regularity um, that was yeah, important for me as well. We also um, did a Christmas party uh, when we still couldn't meet uh, and that was like a sort of three hour bonanza of like Matt's special quiz, uh, we like sang a carol uh, that he, all the volunteers wrote together, um, it was just like very silly um, and yeah, a good opportunity to see everyone um, over uh, online. Yeah, that's basically like how we still try to keep people, uh, volunteers engaged um, and we had a lot of feedback from um, volunteers said it, it, yeah, it was quite uh, important for them that we still were there. Uh, so as soon as we could um, we uh, got on with our volunteer days again and it's something the volunteers were keen to do. I, I struggled be, being behind a computer for like four days a week so as soon as we were able to sort of be released as it were um, yeah we were just all keen to get back out onto the river and um, doing doing the work uh, that we love. Hi Dan so you are, have been with us at DCRT for how many years now? Three years in June. Fantastic and um, when we went into lockdown it all started to change really our volunteering didn't it? So well it was a particular big blow for me because uh, I'd only been doing it a few months before why is this activity important for you? Helping the environment, get to meet people. It's good for me, physical and mental health and well-being. And uh, I've made friends. So I've Did you find our tea breaks helped at all? So a like, lot. Yeah? Did you enjoy them? Yes. <laughs> so you did them good every Good to week, meet everyone. We? Yes, I've been doing a lot more things at home like artwork and craft work and baking and stuff. And I showed the things I've made during the video meetings. Yeah. 
Like my baking and my cards I made and my drawings. Yeah, we did a show and tell, didn't we, some weeks? Yeah. Nature is important for you? Very much. Why? Well, like helping the environment and fresh air, me, help the environment, nature help me relax. I like to get out of town as much as possible as well. Like during Covid, I was up at Lineker most weeks. Then out in the woods as well, and the lakes, checking out the rivers. What in the Doncatchment Rivers Trust now? What was going on? <laughs>